Welcome to Letterbox Book Club. My name is Claire, and this is Mackenzie. And today we're talking about Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. This is turning into a little Sarah J. Mass kind of fan account, it seems, but uh, it's not the case. She just makes good fantasy books, and it's just kicking us back into the reading gear. That's all it is. And Kenzie is going to take us through the blurb, and we will get started on having a chat about it. Yes. All right, let's go. So, also, obviously, our pronunciations of people and places is probably going to differ from person to person. So just if something's different, just please deal with it. (laughs) So, meet Selena Sardothian, beautiful, deadly, destined for greatness. In the dark, filthy salt mines of Indovia, an 18-year-old girl is serving a life sentence. She is a trained assassin, the best of her kind, but she made a fatal mistake. She got caught. Young Captain Westfall offers her a deal, her freedom in return for one huge sacrifice. Selina must represent the prince in a to-the-death tournament, fighting the most gifted thieves and assassins in the land. Live or die, Selina will be free. Win or lose, she is about to discover her true destiny, but will her assassin's heart be melted? So, this Throne of Glass series... (laughs) <laughs> um, was Sarah J Mass's first series and so Akatar comes afterwards so I don't know what in what order we'll be releasing these but this I recommend reading if you're going to start reading her books I recommend reading this one first if you've already read her books doesn't matter and I'm assuming you've also read the books if you're listening to this because otherwise we're spoiling the entire series for you I'm sorry so let's start with our first impression of Selena she seems pretty cool she seems almost as a stereotypical young female protagonist has been over the years. She's got a lot of sass and she's got a lot of confidence and she's got afraid to talk back, which is really nice. She's got a bit of witty banter, no matter like what situation she's in. And I, I quite like that because like that, it just doesn't seem all doom and gloom. Mm-hmm. Like, because she could just be, come off straight away sad and miserable because she's in a slave labor camp. The fact that she's still a bit got a bit of spirit and everything about it, like I liked that. Did you catch, because I'm on my reread of the series and Mm -hmm. you're still on your first read, I only caught on my second read because I just read so fast I don't take in a lot of things. Unless it's it's very important or epic. Unless it's, yeah, like main plot point stuff. Um, Anyway, did you catch when she is talking about and then subsequently they're all like discussing it over several times of how she tried to escape and get to the wall? Yes. But she was, um, she wanted to die. Yeah, that really broke my heart when I went. Yeah, it was a suicide attempt. Because, yeah, I just thought, because she made it look so easy as well, and just to learn that, yeah. Because she said, well, she only had 600 or 300 or something feet from her cell. Yeah. Um, and she made it within an inch of the wall, and most people only make it three feet. Yeah, like, she could just about breathe on the wall, and mm. in the centuries just didn't fire at her. <sighs> Just it like from the books that I'm up to now, her misery and is so like well written in general. I'm just gonna speak a little bit generally about the entire series. But yeah, her misery and just sadness and like depression almost is so well written and I think It gets worse. And it it gets worse, yes. But um <laughs> Right, from where you are. Yeah. Oh really? Oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> in act Qatar. I think Sarah tried to replicate that misery to another character, which didn't come off too well, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. But also, I just want to say, early on, when they were, they were always emphasised, oh, the greatest assassin, Adalin's greatest assassin, and it's like, at this point, we, I didn't really, we didn't really see what she was capable of, so I'm like, I'm, okay, you're emphasising that she's the world's deadliest and most famous assassin in Adalin, but, like, she hasn't done anything yet, it's like, stop emphasising it. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen her yet. Past. Also, just looking on the map, Adalin is very small. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a bit bigger than that. Yeah. So what, what are your initial thoughts on Selena? I just want to wrap her up in a big blanket and hold her and save her. But she's an assassin, Kenzie. She kills people. I know, she kills people. She's bad. She's a baddie. I don't know, it gave me very much like Feyre on steroids. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I reckon, th- I know you've said this about Dorian and comparing him to kind of Reese, but maybe the whole Throne of Glass series was like another template for like Akatar. I suppose it makes sense because the world's so big and they've already established that it's like 
in that guitar at least, there are multiple dimensions and all that type of stuff. Yeah, without spoiling it for you, there is like a bit of a multiverse vibe. Honestly, just because very similar worlds, I would not mind if there was like a little once-off, doesn't have to necessarily be canon, but like a fun little adventure between Akata and Throne of Glass characters. Like that would just be fun. Mm. Like a Freaky Friday situation. Could you imagine? Yeah. And like the, until you get up to it, I won't spoil it, but like the multiverse like little thing yep. that happens. Like it could have easily been just like a right away moment, but then like from that, I think Akata grew. So I'll be interested to like get your thoughts and stuff on that. Throne of Glass, No Way Home. Throne of Glass into the multiverse. <laughs> Sarah Jane S. No, no, no. Have you seen No Way Home yet? No, but like TikTok has, loves to not have spoilers, so. Has it been spoiled for you? Yes, but like we've been <laughs> we've been new. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Alrighty, just quickly. Anyway, sorry. Back on track. What are your initial thoughts on Kale? Oh, uh, I ugh, have a very love hate relationship with Kale. At first, I was just like, oh, like he's just like got loyalty to the prince, like, and this is just his job. But then, yeah, like, he's very, he's 22, like, he's very young, um, like, hasn't got a lot of character growth in his young. Like, I liked him, though, but I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I knew that he would become, like, a love interest. But then that, yeah, just made me fall in love with him even more. But Sarah J Mass never fall for the first, or the second, love interest, apparently. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's breaking those bits of tropes, which is nice. Yeah. Um. Well, early in the book, obviously, he was very protective of Dorian and the king, and he's all like, you know, oh, she's a deadly assassin, make sure, you know, you watch her, you know, every angle and all that type of stuff take every yeah. single precaution but yeah one, once their relationship starts to kind of grow, grow a bit it did give me sort of more big brother vibes because they were leaning into a more of a relationship-esque um scenario particularly with dorian so i quite yeah. liked i quite liked that in a sense and plus you know he seems to match her in training and all that stuff because throughout you know the whole book you know he's training her and they're having that sort of fun relationship development and everything mm. and obviously dorian's not a fighter so what was your opinion on Dorian? First, you know, the initial, oh, he's the love interest vibes, like, you get that straight away, almost. But I was also like, you white, pompous, privileged ass. Yeah, yeah, he's a, <laughs> yeah, privileged white boy is, is, he is the definition. Yeah, very privileged, very, you know, tucked in, sheltered in his car, in his glass castle. He doesn't seem to agree with his, he, with what his father's doing, but he's not at a stage where he could, like, overthrow him at all. But he, he's also kind of, kind of the definition of you are the change you want to see in the world so eventually when his time comes he'll he's if it if it is allowed i guess um you know he could probably have a much better ruling than his father but other than that like he's just that young young prince who just has to bide his time i feel like as well like he went and got selena not because like he wanted to help like get her freedom but it was more he just wanted to shove it in his father's face yeah like oh my champion's better than yours or yeah. and, and that type of thing yeah because he did see it as just the competition like you know he's like the um you know the capital member in the hunger games like this is for his entertainment as well he does not give a damn about what happens to selena or even any other slave or champion that have been that has been picked so yeah it's a shame that he doesn't have that empathy early on but i suppose that you yeah gives him some room to move later on Alrighty, and there's some other characters that we can have a chit chat about that either mm -hmm. like we liked or annoyed um keltane yeah lady keltane yeah i hated I, her. I hate her every because she just came across as that annoying pick me girl oh dorian jealous of all the other ladies who you know trying to catch his eye because throughout the book his mother's trying to get him to like have a girlfriend and be married and have his heir and everything set up for the future but um he's not really into that at the moment and yeah Caltaine all her point of views is just you know watching from afar hoping he notices her and jealous of everybody else and uh, I just it was just annoying for me it was painful and I know she sort of gets a redemption arc but they just made me hate her so much and I had no empathy for her that I was like surely there could have been another character that we gave this arc to. and also Keltane she was um Duke Parrington had a lot of interest in her so that was a he was a little bit creepy you know towards her the, all their interactions oh no, you still don't know about Parrington Oh, okay. Well, anyway, all of his, in, in this book at least, all his interactions with her are creepy old man vibes, and oh, I don't like it, but um, yeah. and, and I just don't like him in general either. But yeah, Keltane, yeah, nah, not it. <laughs> not it for me. 
She also complains about headaches. I noticed, I noticed that was very consistent, and I was like, ooh, something's going on here. Yeah, something's going on there. Um, and then there was... She, she ends up turning to opium. Maybe some other, did some other, yeah, did some other character as well say he was getting headaches? In the second book, yes, but where we are on the... Oh, yeah, lost hands. <laughs> um, yeah, and it is revealed at the end that, yeah, Parrington had some sort of dark influence over her, and that's why she was getting the headaches. Yeah, overall, we learn that um, the king has these, like, rings around his fingers and it's very suspicious because him and yeah. the duke and and another character kane who is uh duke parrington's uh champion all seem to have worn the rings so really bad vibes from really sketchy people not good <laughs> we also meet another character nehemia i love nehemia yeah until the second book <laughs> yeah until the second book. yeah i agree <laughs> yeah we will get to that us. Yeah, she was that female friend and confidant that Selena needed. Keltane could have Keltane could have been that if she, she wasn't was jealous. A hole. But yeah, Nehemia, yeah, I liked her. Her I found her story very interesting because the king had just conquered like Elwi. Is that how you say it? Elwi? I Iwi? Yeah. Elwi. I say Elwi. And you know, she her land has just got conquered and now she's living kind of within her conqueror's confines, like, for the time being. It's it's mainly to quell, you know, all rebellion type of thing. Like, oh, she's living with the enemy, but she's fine. Like, you can trust us, I guess. <laughs> I thought that she was going to die in the first book just because of that situation, you know. But, of course, then that would have caused more of a rebellion or an uprising in Elwi because there's a lot of troops who are really against, you know, yeah, the king's conquerings but yeah i loved her yeah that female friendship cute little nickname she gives selena Elentia. selena yeah. has a lot of fucking names <laughs> in this book <laughs> she has so so many names that uh, who people refer to her as i didn't know nehemia had I, I never would have guessed nehemia had magic until she like helped I yeah i don't know if it's like magic as the same as as it was just utilizing the yeah it was just being yeah being able to utilize the word which was very helpful very useful good friendship to selena which is something that yeah she needed and another cute little character that we get to meet i think it's in the, yeah it is in the first book is fleetfoot <laughs> fleetfoot yes fleetfoot's a character even though it's a puppy <laughs> I love Fleetfoot. Fleetfoot, the nice little hound dog. So cute. Gives good companionship. There are a lot of chapters where it's just like her and Fleetfoot just chilling about doing domestic owner dog duties. Initial thoughts on the king? The king doesn't have a name. What's with Sarah J Mass and not naming her kings? <laughs> it's very consistent. Uh, <laughs> uh, the king uh, does have a name. Uh, okay. You just don't know it yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, in that case, until now, until I get to it, the king doesn't have a name. But yeah, um, don't you smile at me I like that. I hold so much power! <laughs> you do, you do. <laughs> it's always going to be the case. Um, yeah, initial thoughts? Yeah, he's an asshole. I think, he, yeah, he just got off on killing people and having everyone under his rule. I mean, yeah, he's, he's conquered really at this point. Like, what more does he want? He's banished magic, mm -hmm. which is very interesting to figure out how to learn how. Everyone's kind of scared of him. I don't like how he treats Dorian. Like he's just like, yeah. oh, prince. And sometimes I hate a little bit of the language. It's like it'd be in like a, a sentence, and then you just put to just refer to him as prince, and it's like it just seems a little awkward. Oh boy. But is that because? Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, once we circle back to that moment, um, we'll, we'll bring this back up. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. makes sense. It'll make sense. And of course, yes, with Sarah J Mass, you you got to be patient. Everything will be revealed. you just got to bide your time and prop on through. Any other characters? Kane? Some, let's, let's go through some of the other champions that we can remember. Kane, he is an asshole. Never liked him. I just think, yeah, it was OP. For no reason. Oh, there was a little bit of a reason. Yeah, oh, yeah, but... <laughs> um... There was Grave. I didn't really like pay attention to much of like the other cha the other champions. Mm. I only know his name because he makes an appearance in the second book, and um, but yeah. he it comes across as a little bit more important. But Grave was like an a, a, an assassin, but Selena thinks he's pretty lousy. Nox makes a comeback as well. It's too late. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of like an end game. We're gonna call everybody. He's the fourth love interest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, their relationship, like, I wouldn't have been surprised if they kind of hooked up or something in the first book, but no. Um, yeah. Nox was a, is he also an assassin, I believe? Yeah, they are, oh, but he's a poison's master or something. I liked their little friendship 
during the trials and everything. Mm. Gave her another little friend on the inside. But yes, the trials. There were like, what, 24 champions and like 13 or something odd trials? I forget. I'm like, I was yeah. when I first read that, like, I have an issue where I'll read a bit of information and then stop and think and not read ahead to uh, where it would then be explained to me. <laughs> but I thought it was going to be like a round robin like fighting fighting like i versus you i win i move the other person triples off or just dies like i wasn't expecting yeah. it to be like a poison t- tasting task a rock climbing type task or just even like a, a running fitness task you know i thought it was going to be a little bit more brutal than that and i and i thought that all the champions if you lost you would just you died <laughs> yeah yeah and then because it was Sorry, it was said, Nox said, um, if, yeah, if he doesn't win, then he is free anyway. I and thought, I like, what? Well, then what's the point? <laughs> but, um, and of course, Kale tells Selena, try not to be, um, bodacious about it. Just kind of keep to yourself and be in the middle. And of course, Selena, being the prideful chick that she is, she took that to heart. She's like, how dare you? This is one thing that annoyed me when she got, like, too cocky when, like, Kale's like, oh, yeah, just, like, stick to, like, the middle. Like, don't be the best, don't be the worst. And, like, because then you won't be a target. And she's all like, I am a darling's greatest assassin. Like, yeah. how dare he, like, make me downplay my abilities and stuff. And I was like, no, no, like, that's a smart tactic. Like, don't draw attention to yourself. Because she is also in disguise. Yes. Or, like, no one knows who she is because no one knew who a darling's, um, assassin was because you haven't read assassin's blade yet but she this is like a not really a spoiler but she used to wear a a hood and a mask so no one knew who she was and it used to like mask her voice as well so yeah so everyone just thinks she's some random jewel thief and i think all the champions as well they weren't allowed to really like disclose why they were there yeah which i think wouldn't it be a bit more difficult to like hold a tournament amongst your court like they would they not see these people running around rock climbing doing all this stuff and like they yeah, don't know. question it maybe they're just you yeah, know like what you, what's going on here yeah i think because i don't know because it was like in the castle and then like yeah castle was a big i don't know man <laughs> but of course we have to run into a, a little twist early on some of the champions oh, yeah. are dying before the ta- the tasks the or, or throughout the trials in general. They were just dying. I found that got a little bit old a little bit quick because I suppose she did say, yeah, 20-odd champions and only so many trials. Like, how are you going to eliminate? Yeah. Yes, we learned that champions are dying. We don't know why. They're not only dying, they're being brutally murdered. And, yeah, Selena makes an observation that Kane has, you know, after... Uh, every so often when a champion dies that Kane, you know, is like physically a little bit like bigger, stronger, all that type yeah, of stuff. Stronger. So she's sensing some sort of connection there. Also she finds like word marks, which is just like magical rune symbols around the place, and she's obviously very intrigued. And then she learns Nehemia knows about word marks. Yeah. And offers to teach her about them. And also Nehemia lies to her and says that she doesn't really know the common tongue. So Selena yes. has to teach her. But Nehemia is lying to her. <laughs> I think she's doing it to protect herself, you know, and to protect yeah. her, her, is it con- her land, country? Her territory, I guess. We'll go territory. Really trying to downplay whatever it is she's trying to do. And, um... But also she wants to use that as an excuse for to hang out with Selena as well, even if it yeah. means already t- teaching her the common tongue, which she already knows. And Selena also knows how to speak in Elwi, so that, that was a really yes. interesting thing. And throughout the book, obviously, Selena encounters a monster in the depths around the castle. Mm-hmm. Gets a bit freaked out, surprised she didn't die. That's the monster that's hunting and killing the champions, but it's being summoned by someone. We learnt that the word marks have been consistent. Being captain of the guard, you'd think Kale would have a more bigger involvement in, like, <laughs> investigating. <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't seem, but for captain of the guard, he seems to not do his job. <laughs> I suppose, He's just but, like, okay, <laughs> this is happening. But I suppose he and, is training Selena as well. But also you think, like, I understand, like, magic's been wiped out for, what, 50 years at that point or something like that. No, 10 years, sorry. <laughs> seven by seven years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so for 10 years it's been out, but you'd still think that, like, he would have received, like, training on word marks and stuff, like, Kale, like, because he doesn't recognise, like, any of the symbols or anything. And it's like, surely you've seen them, like, he's, because he's pretty much lived there for a long time now, he abdicated his title as, like, a prince of, is it Anel? Yeah, maybe he just thinks it's just fancy symbols, or maybe it's just from, like, the old times when that, like, obviously he probably would have known of 
them and their use of magic. Yeah. Oh no, ten years ago he would have been twelve. He probably would have had no clue. And depending on what the magic situation was like in and and now as well. But oh well. Yeah. In anal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and throughout the book, Selena stumbles upon because she's she's an inquisitive person. She's always sussing out her surroundings. She's actually been trying to escape also this entire time. She's been trying to find <laughs> she's memorizing the routes of the castle. Um, any all sorts of things, and um, and amongst that, she manages to find a secret like passageway behind her tapestry in her bedroom, and leads to a secret tunnel, um, which leads to some other tunnels, and she eventually finds a tomb or tombs of Elena and Gavin. Well, a tomb and the two sarcophagi. Tomb and sarcophagi, and they were the um like old rulers of the of Ardalan. I'm gonna admit throughout this whole part. Of when Elena, yeah, starts, like, interacting with Selena. I got so confused <laughs> about what was going on. <laughs> maybe it's because I was reading, maybe because I was reading, I don't know. I wouldn't say I was skimming it, but I was like, I was, every time, I was just a bit so confused with this interaction. I was like, why is this happening? I was just like, it's such a short book. Like, hang on, I'm checking how many pages it is. Yeah, it's like 400 and something. It's such a small book, and there is so much information packed into it. Yeah, so much info. But not a lot happening as well. It's a very awkward... Yeah. it's world building. Yeah. Law and world building. Yeah, I got a bit confused about the whole interaction. And there was a lot of, you know, Selena would ask a question, but then Elena wouldn't really give her an answer, which meant that Selena had to figure out herself, and it all would just make sense if she was just told what was needed to be told. <laughs> no ambiguous mm. statements. Yeah, you're so kind of comes back into play a little bit as well. Yeah, a bit of consistency, yeah. I, I bet. And we've also learned so, that Sarah J. Mess. It's really? all very sorry. It's all very self-serving in the end. I have read the first couple, first couple of chapters of Empire of Storms, so very good. I already have a good concept of Elena and Gavin, right now. Oh yeah. Um, I am just about to start that. And what I was going to say, Sarah J. Mass really likes naming her weapons. The amount of weapons that are named <laughs> in the series and yeah. even in Akata, <laughs> like Damaris. I get confused by the names. Yeah, Damaris, Goldrin, the like amulet of Orinth, and then Elena's amulet. And the sword like, of wah! Orinth. And the sword of Orinth. Sword of Orinth, yeah. But Elena then points her into the right direction and she ends up, Nehemia ends up giving Selena like a necklace, an amulet, the eye of Elena, and it is, we learn that it protects her from, from just like, what exactly from? Just, just oh. entities, just general harm. No harm, because it saves that person Yeah. in that book. Okay, yep. So just all <laughs> sorts of harm, it's just, a, it's a very protective amulet. Okay. But at that point, she doesn't really know what it does. Sometimes it glows, like that's fun, and, and it warms the, the chest that it sits on. Like, <laughs> you're like, yeah. wow, what's this thing? Fun, <laughs> fun, what a funky amulet. All right, anything else you want to bring up before we talk about the final test? Oh, yeah, um, I mean, throughout this period, Selena and Dorian develop a nice little relationship as well. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, that's pretty significant. <laughs> I think they were cute, but yeah, first love Yeah, interest. I think it was like puppy love. Yeah, because she hadn't been with anyone for a little while. Dorian seems and, to have not yeah. been with anyone for a while. I think also for Dorian, like, for her, it was just like, oh, like, physical and like intimate human contact, like, after yeah. nothing. And But for him, I think it, she was literally like, oh, a new, shiny, exciting toy. Yeah, it's like, oh, if I could tame, like, the assassin as yeah. well. But I think um, we yeah. learned that Kale is more into that type of ideology. We learn about that later. Um, yeah, because Selena sneaks into a ball and then dances with Dorian and Kale is jealous, even though Selena asked him if she if he wanted to dance with her and he said no! At the same time, he's also... He, he thinks he's he, she's going to turn on them like at any moment, so he's also got that yeah. in the back of his mind. Because he last thing he wants is to fall, from, fall for some romantic little trap. Doesn't Kale also give... This may also be second book. I'm getting so muddled. Selena, a ring, a jewel ring, or is that second book as well? This is this book. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, Kale says no to dance, is yeah. jealous, but will give her a ring as a present. Like, dude, make up your mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, so Selena reveals, yeah, like some of her past in this book about how her uh, parents were murdered when she was eight. Arabin Hamill, who is like ward of the assassins in Rifthold, Kurian and trained her and stuff. But she also um she fell in love with another assassin there 
named Sam, who, like, Arabin essentially orchestrated his death. And then, so I think Kale, because Sam, yeah, was killed by Rock Farron, who's like a crime lord. Kale reveals that um, Arabin's bodyguard killed Rock Farron for what he did to Sam. So she gets, like, a little bit of that, like, redemption. Yeah, closure. But also that whole who killed, who killed who and why, I got a little bit confused as well. I don't know if it's just because I just was skipping too much. just gonna Assassin's Blade. No, 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 not even that. But, like, in the second book when they're talking about Rock Farron, I'm like, this guy seems significant-ish to the situation. Why has, doesn't it ring a bell right now? So that was just me. That's just me being dumb. But, yeah, but again, that's more second book real vibes. But again, like it's so many characters, so much character, so much interlap. Building. Like they all, they all make yeah they multiple all appearances. Each other. They all, f- yeah, yeah, make appearances in books and everything. But also, seemingly, Dorian gets a little bit jealous anytime like uh, Selena trains with Kale as well, because like <laughs> almost Kale taking up that time. Yeah. There's also a little parallel in the second book, you know, where then, I'm just going to say it now, that um, Selena does dance with Kale and then Dorian's kind of watching from afar. So I love that little parallel first book, second book yeah, vibes. I didn't even notice that. Final test. We know Selena, you know, makes it through the entire time. There is a point where, like, she does end up revealing that she is, like, the assassin, like, everyone knows who she is. And so she has to really up her game. But now she makes it to the final test. Easy peasy. And it's just really, now this is just the fights. The top four, you know, two people fight each other. The winner of that, you know, fight each other. Kane Kane wins against his nameless opponent, who I don't care about far too easily. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then Selena versus Graves. Grave? Graves. And, um, and she does it seemingly very easy as well. She does that to be arrogant and cocky. We love that about her. Again, she could be miserable, she could have just, like, wasted away, but no, she's fighting for her freedom. We learned just prior to this, though, that, um, Keltane has been instructed to, to drug Selena, because they have drinks in between fights, okay. <laughs> they have a wine to celebrate the, a toast to the final two. And Keltane bikes it with Gloriella? Yep. Which is a paralyzing drug. And also it can mess up your your, psych- your psyche. It's like a hallucinogenic. Essentially, she's roofied. Yeah, roofied. Yeah, yeah. Which I was like so mad and everything because Selena, she's just making her way through, and these people are just hard against it because they want Kane to be the champion. And even before all this, Selena figures out, oh yeah, Kane's summoning summoning this this creature, um, the Everdick, and that's been slaughtering all the champions, and she does manage to kill it at some point as well with Damaris because we love named weapons um but back to the fight she's drugged Kane is beating the absolute daylights out of her which oh this just the writing of how he's beating her and everything it just it broke my heart it's like damn Sarah yeah. Sarah is very descriptive Sarah does not hold back on like the violence and yeah. the gore in this series so far and he brings up how her parents were murdered he's just going in for the kill yeah but in selena's mind she's like in a full-on like demon world around her like she thinks she's kind of like hallucin hallucinating um yeah yeah she sees something more the world around her is more wicked and demonic than what say how nehemia's watching like she's just seeing selena getting bashed against the clock tower Whereas Selena yeah. is in this full on nightmare, and um, and yeah, and like Kane is not quite Kane; he's more demonic than normal, and like yeah, that, I was also a bit confused about like some of the other like description elements. Like, was there a ton of demons like around them, around him as well? Yeah, yeah like a full on army, I guess. Yeah, he'd like Just... opened like the veil, I guess you could call it, between like their world and like the demons. And this is where we le- learn mostly about, yeah, the demon worlds and, like, portals and all that type of stuff. And then it gets to a point where Nehemia recognises, because everyone's watching this battle, because it, it's, you know, it's a grand moment. And she's like, something's not quite right. And she manages to, like... He summons Elena. Well, she reaches out for... Yeah, she reaches out for help, like, yeah, I don't know, like, telepathically or whatever. And Elena hears the call. Yeah, and so she then heals um Selena of her... Yeah, she gets the glory out of her system. Yeah. And so she is fine, and then she manages to fight back with utter ease. And then she just kind of belts him back. I forget how she, what she does, but yeah, Kane ends up yeah, being kind of like KO'd, knocked out, I guess. Yeah. He is very surprised. But also, I just want to mention, like, through the fight as well, like, Kale is like, get up, get up. Like, he's, like, she is breaking his heart right now. Yeah. Yeah, it was actually really sweet, you know, him being like, get up. Because he's yeah. been training her this whole time. Like, he's this is a real mentor moment. Like, don't give up. 
Yeah. Hasn't really figured out that she has been drugged or anything. Like he just yeah. thinks he's just he's just thinks she's having a bad a bad spat when she just demolished graves in like two minutes like yeah. obviously something is wrong but um yeah. yeah he's trying to tell her to get up he he wasn't allowed to pull her out or anything like he can't do any of that sort of cowardice maneuvers yeah but yeah elena then yeah heals selena she beats kane she is declared victor um her mind has been like closed of that demon world and she's relatively fine she also had a mark burning on her forehead very a la house of night <laughs> <laughs> yeah throwback does every i don't think everyone sees it or well, they do because i swear the everyone se- sees it it sees that mark and no one thinks that's suspicious at all or like magic related anyway well, i think they do but they're just like they let it go <laughs> being a bad sport kane decides to like try have a slash at her with a sword and everything and then kale manages to kill him in time and this traumatizes the poor boy but it's like, you're the captain of the guard. Have you not been in tussles before? Yeah. And yeah, and like, it's revealed really, yeah, that he hasn't killed anyone before. It's like, what? Like, you've been in no battles, no fights. If you're just guarding, you just or you just kind of like HR in a way. Like, you just organise people where they are. Doesn't necessarily yeah. mean you have to be in a tussle. But yeah, and we learn that he's very traumatised by this. Even though it was really, like, self-defence. And yeah, Keltane is all, gets the, shoved under the rug when the king and the duke is the one that told her to do it. And she's all acting crazy because she's been having headaches. She's like an opium addict as well. Into the dungeons she goes. Because they're like, you tried to kill her. Yeah, and I, I got a little bit mad at that, but like, of course she was being a, por- a pawn in, in their game. Yeah, but then the king was all like, haha, your power worked with her, ha ha ha. And then it's pretty much the end. The end. No, but then um, Selena essentially breaks up with Dory. Oh yeah, yeah, because now that the king's champion, being the king's oh. champion, doing his dirty work, having to pretend- start assassinating people... Uh, it would definitely look bad on the young prince. <laughs> yeah, and also because, yeah, and he's like, well, we can keep it a secret. And she's like, I don't want to be your secret. Like. Yeah, oh, yeah. But also she still has every intention to try and, to rot the system and try and, like, get out. It's her, been her plan the entire time. Yeah. So, but yes, she is to serve four years under the king's eye, doing his bidding. And we shall see where that leads us. <laughs> Any other little points, moments you want to talk about, Kenzie? Um... I don't think so, not in this book. Again, it was like a lot of lore, a lot of names of places, a lot of, you know, weapon naming, all these important people and things, but not a lot still happening. I guess the first step was getting her to be the champion. It's the book one, book two setup. Yeah, it's just the world building. But it does get good. Oh, it gets so good. I would say Throne of Glass is not like my favourite, favourite book out of the series, but like it does set it up to be interesting. What, 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 when you imagined the glass castle, how did you really imagine it? Because every time I think of glass, I think of like fully transparent and I was like, oh, that does not seem right. But I know glass can be quite dense as well. So. But then I think as well that it was um, like it was just described as like the glass had been built around like the pre-existing castle. Oh, so it's not entirely out of glass like how I've been imagining it this entire time. Because she says at one point it's like someone just dropped a glass castle on top of like a stone castle. Yeah, and then because in her, yeah, because in her area it's all like it says like the old part of the castle and so it's still stone. Huh. Uh, I just I just played myself. <laughs> Been thinking it's glass the entire like, time. I, yeah, I couldn't like picture it, so I was just like, I don't know. My brain just couldn't comprehend. Although I've known this for a long time, but like I saw a, I saw a TikTok that I shared to Kenzie. It was about this chick explaining, you know, when she reads, she can see it as a movie playing in her head, and like I yeah, that happens to me. But some stuff can get a bit overwhelming and the descriptions can be a bit confusing but yeah i'm, I'm sure yeah, you're the same. Was literally just like so like here i'll show you this is what i imagined every for everyone listening i have a pop vinyl so this the guy inside is the old castle yeah and then the plastic is the glass castle like they yeah. just put it on top <laughs> <laughs> that would make sense yeah <laughs> But yeah, that's just, yes, that's how I imagined it. All right, final thoughts, feelings, emotions? I think I liked this book. I don't want to say more than Akatar, like the first one, but probably like it just the same, like it really pulled me in. And I, because when I bought it, I only bought the first book because I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like it. I'll just buy the first one. And then I finished it. And yeah, the next day I went and bought like two and three and then like four, five, six, and then seven, eight. Like, yeah. I could not, and I think I I finished them all in like two weeks. I think. Yeah, you just got pulled in. 
I got pulled into the world, yeah. It's very rare that books do that to me. Filled the void that Akatar left. <laughs> I actually think I read all of these before I finished Silver Flames. My final thoughts, I enjoyed it. And yeah, as I just said before, a lot of a lot of lore, a lot of build-up. Some moments I got confused with things, but that was just me. And yeah. <laughs> a lot happened, but not a lot happened. But again, it's just the first book of a freaking eight-book series. Like, there's only so yeah. much you could dwing- and dwindle And they just get bigger and bigger. Yeah, slightly, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I took the risk. I bought the series for like eight books for $65. Like, that was great. I just took the risk. Now, I feel like we, we have very similar tastes. So I, whatever you enjoyed, I probably would have enjoyed it as well, which I do so far. But I do, yeah, as you said, kind of wished we read this before Akatar, but that's okay. Yeah, I think because... Now, like, from reading Avatar, like, I can see, because it's all about, um, like, not necessarily this book, but, like, in the series, like, the Fae come into it, and, like, certain characters are Fae and whatever, and it's like, there's mates, and there's magic, and, like, there's elemental magic, and there's shape-shifting, and I think because with Avatar as well, I hadn't read in a really long time, and then I was just thrown into, like, a fantasy world, whereas, like, this one, like, slowly, like, it brings you into it. But yeah, I can definitely see where, like, oh, like, I can see the inspiration for, like, this character. And I had read a theory, I don't know if it's a theory or if it was hashtag confirmed, but, like, Dorian was the original, like, blueprint for recent. Yeah, I can see that, because he's, like, the, the good, well-intentioned, privileged person who has a very powerful influence like because like he's a prince like he has powerful influence over his people people adore him and yeah we'll just see where that where that leads us for him yeah yeah he's just nice and he's just he wants to do the right thing but it's hard to do the right thing when you have a conquering father who doesn't really like appreciate you as a son but i'm sure we'll find yes. out why yes that was throwing glass arguably your your sec favorite second favorite series i don't know no i think they're both equally matched because like akatar's not finished Okay, alright, alright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised, yeah, Throne of Glass hadn't received, like, a call to, like, an adaptation world before. Or is it just because Akatar is, like, that new popular thing? I think, yeah, because it was gained popularity really fast. But it'd be cool if, like, both became an adaption. So, I'm just on, yeah, Amazon, and there is a hardcover set of Throne of Glass. Oh my god. Three hundred dollars. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it's sixty-five dollars down from two hundred and thirty. Jesus! Boxing Day specials have begun. But yeah, that's all from us for Throne of Glass, the first book. Um, keep an ear out for when we talk about the rest of the series. Uh, we will again. Don't know when they'll be released, but we will be talking about Crown of the Night at some point. Yes. And so yeah, follow us along on that little journey. You'll hear from us next time. Yep. Any final things to add? Um, I can't without spoilers. <laughs> like, it's so hard. Like, because there's so many things, and then when you read it and it all comes together, it's so good. If you have similar thoughts, feelings, emotions, uh, be sure to leave a comment or whatever on our Instagram. We actually have a, a finalized Instagram account now. It's a letterbox underscore book underscore club. Please share your thoughts because I love hearing opposing ideas and everything like that. Because I'm the type of person, like, I'll have an opinion and if someone points out something that I've missed, I'll be like, you know what, that's a fair point. I will consider that and reevaluate my idea. Yeah. Oh, finally, look what I was just able to finally do. Oh, yay. Well done. The name. Now, Kenzie now and Claire. it is official. Alrighty, go follow it. Go have some fun. Leave some comments. I'm making it a professional account. <laughs> yes. By the time we're recording this, uh, it is almost Christmas, so I'm just going to say, I'm going to be corny, like, Merry Christmas. I don't know, by the time this is released, Christmas will be well Merry and gone. Merry Christmas. But Merry Christmas, Merry Crisis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Merry Chrysler. Keep an ear out for crown of midnight and the rest of the series listen along to akatar if you want to hear us talk about that and i'm sure there are other lot of little in little books that we're going to be talking about here and there yeah merry christmas have a new, have a happy new year we'll see you next time bye by the time this is released happy easter yeah exactly happy easter be every holiday celebration under the sun <laughs> bye bye, bye.